always believed that the tax code should encourage the success of small and medium businesses. And I don't mean to exclude large businesses, but they have the capability uh, of going beyond government to take care of their needs a lot of time, even though it causes large business a lot of problems. And uh, for creating jobs for uh, small and medium-sized businesses, because they're the economic engine of our economy, uh, that's true now more than ever before because we are in tough economic times. Business owners should learn about the tax incentives meant for you. Uh, these incentives will help you hire more employees and improve or expand your business. I'm glad that we were able to get significant tax relief included in the legislation responding to this financial crisis. I always like to do more. We ought to even repeal it. But with this pay-as-you-go philosophy in Washington, and it's probably going to be uh, worse after the election than before the election, uh, you know, getting rid of it uh, is, is not going to be, very, uh, at least under that approach, it's going to be very easy. So we just kick the can down the road uh, from time to time, as we have done for the last four or five years. The last time we've done for multi-years was the first year that I was chairman of the 2001 tax bill. Uh, the legislation also extends certain key provisions for business. For example, I know a great interest that you folks have in the research and development uh, tax credit was extended for two years and was also expanded. The legislation also includes uh, significant incentives for new sources of energy, renewable energy, uh, energy conservation as well, uh, tax incentives even for conservation. Included are renewable energy production tax credits, including the on-cap wind energy credit, uh, clean renewable energy bonds, and cellulose biofuels, the second generation of, of ethanol. Uh, there's a long list of tax provisions that provide much needed tax relief uh, to businesses and individuals. But what worries me is that many of you here, business owners and accountants, and even uh, government officials that might be here, too often think that these tax incentives as an example for R&D, for energy, you can name any of them, that these just happen to be for big corporations. And I want to impress upon you, nothing could be further from the truth. I want to assure you that I'm not writing these tax laws just for Fortune 500 companies. We write these tax laws to help business generally. The IRS reported recently about 85% of the R&D credit went to the largest companies of America. The key reason the largest companies were much more active than small and medium companies in applying for the credit. Too often, small and medium businesses just simply uh, are not taking advantage of the R&D and many other incentives. A comedian once said that 90% of life is just showing up. The same is true in tax small and medium businesses need to show up, take advantage of these benefits. So my message to you is learn about the tax incentives that are available. These incentives can help your business succeed and thrive, especially in a down economy. I know that many smaller businesses are not taking uh, certain tax credits because they fear the IRS. This is of concern to me and I suppose in my 28 year career it was most uh, expressed in my uh, getting the uh, IRS uh, reconstruction, I forget what it was called, the restructuring committee, a commission set up and, uh, because of the great intimidation against small business and uh, serving on that commission and getting the law passed to change somewhat the IRS to be less intimidating and for you folks that deal with the IRS, tell me we didn't do a bit of good. But, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go back through the history if you want to discuss it. But that's how I express my interest in helping small business. There's maybe every day we have to do that, but that was one big giant. Uh, I worked in that restructuring effort uh, to put real emphasis upon the word service as part of the inter, uh, internal revenue service uh, nomenclature. Uh, and there we looked at service being this way, that what we ought to do is not have people afraid to contact the IRS. 
when a, a simple taxpayer calls in for information, you ought to get your phone answered, you ought to talk to a real person, and you ought to get a correct answer. And if people have that sort of relationship with the IRS, and that may be, uh, you know, expecting too much, but if that's the relationship you have, and people uh, feel comfortable with the IRS, you go there for your information, we're going to get more tax money coming in. Uh, the IRS needs to help taxpayers pay the correct amount of money, not a penny less, not a penny more. I would say to the good employees of the IRS that uh, they need to take this message back to the rest of the bureaucracy. The IRS should work with business, making sure that businesses take advantage of the tax incentives provided and coming to the correct answer the very first time. In doing so, the IRS needs to recognize the realities of small and medium businesses. Far too often the record keeping and other burdens placed on small businesses are unreasonable. What may be tolerable for IBM is completely inappropriate for a local business here in, in America, and I speak to small business in Iowa. The IRS needs to understand that at all levels, IRS agents need to be fully informed and knowledgeable of the law. It's not fair to a business owner for the IRS to state that they owe thousands more in taxes after a subpar examination. That business person then has to spend a great deal of time and money to go to the appeals court or the tax court and finally get full and correct review. The IRS needs to do the job right the first time. 